Ah, Finland. <laughs> Let's talk about this place that I totally have no preconceived biases towards. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Welcome to the dark sheep of Northern Europe. All the other Nordic countries are like la, 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 la. While Finland is like <laughs> We'll get into the heavy metal thing in a bit, but first now just remember, Finland is Nordic, but don't call it Scandinavian. There's a huge difference. That title only belongs to Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. First of all, Finland is located in Northern Europe, lying on the Gulf of Finland and the Gulf of Bothnia, east of all that Scandinavian stuff. To the west, they border Sweden on the Torne River, or the Tornionjoki, until it reaches the tri-point border with Norway at the three-country Cairnstone. And to the east, they border big ol' Russia with another tri-point border with Norway that looks like this. The country is divided into 19 regions, or Makunta, with the autonomous region that we'll talk about a little bit later, and the capital of Helsinki located in the south on the Gulf of Finland, which is also the second most northern capital in the world after Reykjavik, Iceland. The country also owns about 180,000 islands, the highest concentration of which found in the Baltic off the coast in the Oland Archipelago. Keep in mind, parts of Finland also lie within the Arctic Circle. That's how far up north they are. And the three busiest airports are Helsinki, Oulu, and Rovaniemi. Now my favorite part, territorial anomalies! First of all, with Russia, there are too many split islands and penne enclaves the islands of Aikaniemi and Sursari, Tarasinsari Islands and Lakes, the island in the Koitayoki River. Seriously, just play around with Google Earth and see how many you can find. Finally, we get to Sweden and things get interesting. Most of the borders with Sweden run along rivers that eventually flow into the Torne River, and then we get a strange golf course that is split between the two countries in the town of Tornio and Sweden. Not only that, but then you have the strange Market Island right next to Oland in the Gulf of Bothnia, which has an inverted S-shaped border. It had to do with the lighthouse that was built belonging to Finland, but then Sweden was like, hey, it's too close to our side of the island. So they drew a border that was like this to give each side equal shares of the land. See this archipelago cluster of islands right here? Yeah, it belongs to Finland, even though most of the people here speak Swedish. Oland is Finland's strange little administrative anomaly. Long story short, it used to belong to Sweden, but then the Russians took over it in addition to Finland. But then after the Russian Revolution, Finland became free, and then the UN decided Oland should belong to Finland with autonomy. But then the Soviets started attacking again, and then Finland was like, nope, and then fought back relentlessly defending themselves and Oland, and Sweden just kind of sat there and didn't really do much for Oland as they decided to stay neutral. Finland defending Oland was kind of like the turning point. Now it's kind of like, Oland! Come back to me! Look, Sweden, we had some great times, but you kind of really didn't do much for me when things got crazy. I mean, Finland defended me, okay? And he treats me well, okay? His tax incentives are great. It's, it's time to move on. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> Oland. Also, Finland kind of threatened that if Oland was ceded back to Sweden, they would demand the Tornio Valley. Now, before the whole Soviet thing, Finland operated the regions of Karelia, Sala, Kusamo, Petsamo, and some extra islands in the Gulf. After the wars with the Soviets, these regions were all ceded back to Russia, effectively cutting off their access to the Arctic Ocean. Very quickly, some notable sites and landmarks would have to be the old castles like Savonlina, Hamenlina, Olavinlina, and the most renowned Suomenlina. You can probably guess what Lina means by now. Rovaniemi is otherwise known as the home of Santa Claus, where you can go rain Deer sledding, Inari and Ivalo is where you can get a real Sami traditional cultural experience. Of course, Helsinki is the epicenter of Finnish architecture and culture, with landmarks such as the Tempeli Aukia Church excavated into a rock, Mannerheim Street, the busiest road with all the shops and austere post Soviet influenced blocky colonnaded buildings, or the iconic Helsinki Cathedral. Now, those are all great, but Finland isn't really much of a tight metropolitan type of country. They love their space and have quite a bunch of it. Let's see what lies outside these cities, shall we? <laughs> Now, if you want me to make this simple, some would argue that Finland is the best winter wonderland in the world. I mean, Canada's cool, but they have too many bears, and Iceland is too explody, and Russia is too... Cold. Seriously, though, the land is generally flat, except in the north by the border with Norway, in which the highest mountain can be found, Mount Halti, although the peak is in Norway. However, in 2017, Norway plans to give Finland the peak for their 100th anniversary of independence from the Soviets. Finland is just wonderfully crisp and refreshing, usually ranking in the top three countries in the world with the cleanest air quality. This is partially because Finland is almost 80% covered in forests, one of the highest concentrations per square kilometer in the world, only behind countries like Gabon and Suriname. This makes Finland 
Finland, the largest producer of wood in the EU and one of the top in the world. Not only that, but Finland has about 188,000 lakes, most heavily concentrated in Lakeland. And in addition to lakes, about 10% of the country is comprised of all water bodies like rivers, ponds, and streams. When mixed with the land, this makes about one third of the country home to swamps and bogs, making it the highest wetland proportion country in Europe and disputably the world. Eh, maybe, but our floods are crazier. Fittingly, the name for swamp in Finnish is suo, and the word for Finland is suomi. I mean, technically they also have like nine other words for swamp, like rame, neva, leto, luta, laiteko, apa, paisa, janka, and korpi. And they love these swamps. One Finnish pastime is jumping in the mud, sometimes naked, and either playing soccer or wrestling. The landscape of Finland is shaped that way because imagine what happens when you crush something under a heavy glacier for a really long time, and then after the glacier melts, you're left with pockety erosion and mineral residue all over. Not only that, but Finland is experiencing a post-glacial rebound in which the land is steadily rising along the coast of the Gulf of Bothnia. Every year, Finland gains about seven square kilometers and is technically rising out of the sea. The longest river is the Kemijoki that passes through Lapland and reaches the Gulf of Bothnia. And the largest lake, as well as the fourth largest in Europe, Lake Saima, is located in the southeast. Because Finland is so far north, they are known for being the land of the midnight sun, as during summer you can literally see the sun for 24 hours a day in the northern parts by the Arctic Circle. And of course, in the winter times, there's hardly any sunlight at all, but if you're lucky, you can witness an aurora borealis, especially in the northern parts. Oh, and by the way, the national animals are the whooper swan and the brown bear. Finnish agriculture is, of course, very standard for northern European countries. Lots of rye wheat, turnips, potatoes, and of course, fishing is huge out here. However, due to the abundance of lakes and rivers, Finns prefer their own domestic freshwater fish like perch, zander, and miyuku as opposed to the sea fish. Speaking of which, coming to Finland, chances are you will eventually try reindeer meat in some shape or form, whether in stew or grilled. In Lapland, you might even find bear on the menu. You can try mami, a pudding made of rye, and of course, every Finn will make every visitor try this strong, salty salmiaki. They love salmiaki so much that they made it into an ice cream, and it's so good, and I'm so mad they don't sell it in my hometown. All right, in the wintertime, they build ice hotels, and there's like this cool waterfall in the Paratisi Kuru area in the Uru Kekonen National Park. Okay, let's talk about Finnish people. Okay, if you go to Finland, you will most likely experience a rather intense yet intriguing social construct. First of all, the country has about 5.5 million people and is the most sparsely populated country in the EU. The country is about 90% ethnically Finnish, about 6% are Swedish, and the rest is made up of everything else under the sun, like Russians, Estonians, Asians, and Africans. They use the Euro as currency, they use the Type C E F outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Of course, the Finnish people speak the Finnish language, which is arguably one of the hardest languages on earth to learn. Conjugation is a mess, nouns and adjectives have inflection dictionary forms whatever that means. Nonetheless, Finland has one of the best schooling systems in the world. In Finland, school hours are shorter, less homework is given, and there are virtually no mandated standardized tests apart from the exam you take in your final senior year of high school. Also, if you get your PhD, you have the option to get a sword and a top hat along with your diploma. This is also why Finland is one of the most English-friendly countries in Europe. Children are taught around ages 9 to 11, and most people of the younger generation can at least hold an impressively fluid conversation. Finland is actually a conscription country in which all men ages 18 and up are required to serve either in the military or civilian services anywhere from 165 days to a year, depending on the type of service applied for. Oland Islands are exempt from the military conscription, but are required to serve in some kind of institution like the Coast Guard or civil services. Finnish culture is actually pretty funny. The stereotype is that Finns are incredibly quiet and don't talk that much in most public transactions. Just mind your business and no small talk. The cartoon Finnish Nightmares illustrates this concept pretty well. Check it out. Which is funny because Finland is huge on the boisterous, loud, and flashy heavy metal culture culture, having the highest concentration of heavy metal bands out of any other country in the world with nearly 650 per 1 million residents. Finns also invented the wife carrying competition in which a man must carry either his wife or girlfriend or any girl that agrees to get tossed around in an obstacle course and the winner gets the women's weight in beer. It's very strategic because if you want to win, you might want to carry a lighter wife, but if you want more beer, whew, you better do your squats, bro. Now, if you must know one thing about Finnish culture, you have to know about sauna. The Finns invented the sauna most homes, hotels, and apartments have a sauna built into them. They actually had a sauna competition at one point, but then a Russian guy died and they had to kind of cancel it. Overall though, Finns are kind of brought up in a mindset known as Sisu. It's kind of hard to explain the exact definition of it, but it kind of means something like guts or determination and never giving up, which really helped them along the fight with the Soviets. Sisu is to Finland what Jantelouin is to Denmark. There are so many other things I wish we could talk about, but we're running out of time. But we do have time for friend time.
Historically, Finland was kind of always a little lonely. I mean, few, if any, trading routes ever went through this area. Even the Mongols were like, eh, we're good, nah, yeah, carry on. Nonetheless, over time, Finland did develop relations and to this day is one of the most diplomatically outreached countries in the world. I mean, the Finnish passport is the number one ranked and most sought after as it has the highest number of visa-free countries applied to it. First of all, Finland generally gets along with other Nordic countries. However, they have the biggest frenemy relationship with Sweden. They'll trade and share a beer or two, but when hockey season comes, the bloodbath begins. When it comes to Russia, Finland kind of has to be their friend because Russia has the longest border with them and business is important. Nonetheless, Russia is kind of seen as like the next door neighbor that you once got into an argument with, but then you kind of fix things up, but then you kind of really didn't get over it. And then you have to see them every other day in the morning as you go to work. Germans are always welcome in Finland and Hungarians are like the long lost distant cousins that they just discovered and are trying to build a relationship with. Their best friends though might be Estonia and Norway. Everybody loves Norway. It's like the Cameroon of Europe. Norway has never had any controversy with Finland and with the recent mountain gift proposal, relations are only strengthened. Estonia is like the nagging little sister that tries to imitate her bigger brother. I mean, they both even have the same national anthems. But in the end, they are family and Finland always loves her. In conclusion, Finland really is a winter wonderland with quiet people that transform into metal monsters after a pint of long drink, topping their days off, baking themselves in human ovens for fun. And with that, we finish the Finnish episode. Ah, you waited for that for over 10 minutes. Stay tuned. The... M Mass, the country that must not be named, is coming up next.